Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Hakuna La Planta. My name is Kevin and welcome back to another video of houseplants A to Z. For those that are new here, in each video I will be talking about a plant or plant group that starts with each letter of the alphabet. Today's letter is I and I'm going to talk about the, the Philodendron Imbi Variegata. So a lot of you will know this plant from another name. This is the Philodendron Jose Bono. And um, I guess this is the perfect time to tell you that in this series, I cheat a little bit. And so for this video in this series, um, I'm going to talk about this plant and then I'm gonna put a second video out. I don't know if it's gonna be a week to two weeks from now where I talk about this plant again. So basically I is gonna stand for Philodendron Imbi Vergata. And then next week's video is gonna be the Philodendron Jose Bono, which again is the same plant as this one over here. So I'll just give you a rundown. In today's video, I will be talking about a brief care guide because honestly, these plants are very easy to care for. And then just a journey of when I first bought it, what it looked like, and I mean, how it's doing now, I think she's pretty happy. In the second video where I talk about this plant, I am going to repot this plant and I guess I'll show you, I know you can't really see it, but the roots here are bulging out of this tiny little net pot. And even when I like touch it here, like there's no give. And yeah, obviously the size of the pot here is, it's a weird proportion to the size of the plant. So I feel like it would be happier if I put it in a bigger pot and I'm actually gonna put it in this gigantic, I think it's an eight inch diameter net pot. This is not eight, is it? 10? Is this 10? I don't know. I'll put what it actually is right over here. And I'm just going to attach uh, some bamboo stakes right here. I ran out of moss and it's just gonna have to be on this one. So before I go on with part one of this video, for those who are watching that are not subscribed and enjoy my content, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel and also follow me on Instagram only if you want to, but that's my name over here, Hakuna La Planta. Okay, so let's talk about this plant a little bit. So let's just, let's take a look at the leaves. They're very large paddle-like leaves. Um, this is the newest leaf here. You can see that it is predominantly green with a speckly variegation, but the variegation can present itself as, I guess, more block-like variegation, like in this leaf. The variegation, when it does come out this way, comes out much cream-like or white, and then through time it does fade, so this was actually a lot lighter before. And actually there's a perfect representation over here, this was essentially the same hide, so it focuses on you. This over here, um, it was the same kind of cream as this, but now you could see that it's almost fully green and flush to the leaf. And I guess one more point that I wanna bring up about the variegation, this variegation is stable. This plant will not revert back to its green form. Um, and so you don't need to worry about a leaf having or losing its variegation, which is always nice in a plant. So like in the previous videos, I will put a info card right over here. When it comes to watering for this plant, the guidelines kind of stay very similar to most philodendrons. And you should feel the top inch to two inches of soil to see if it's dry. For my plants and soil, I like to hold onto the pot and through time you get used to um, what feels dry and what feels like watered. I don't know if that makes sense. But I guess through time, you'll know just based on the weight of the pot and the plant if it needs to be watered. In my environment, most of my plants like to be watered every week to two weeks. And even in the winter right now, it's kind of staying true to that. But I know for some of my plants, I stretch it out maybe every two to three weeks. Temperature wise, uh, a lot more resilient than other philodendrons. You could probably get away with a temperature that's about 55 degrees Fahrenheit to about 
80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Moving on to humidity, this plant doesn't need a whole ton of humidity. I originally housed this plant in my living room, which has between 40 to 50% humidity, and it did really well. It didn't die, it was pushing out leaves. Like for example, these two leaves, so the oldest one here, and then the one over here came out with no problem. But when it became winter, I put it in the bedroom where there's a humidifier. And I mean, the leaves are a lot bigger now. I don't know if that's a factor that plays into that. You could fertilize a whole bunch of ways. Um, I usually fertilize every two to four weeks. And I actually stretched that to about every four to six weeks during the winter months. The soil mix will be your usual aeroid mix that has a lot of airy components. You could see that mine is very happy in LECA and a nutrient solution. And when it comes to lighting, it can be happy in medium light to obviously bright in direct light. Most of my plants are under grow light just because it's winter. At the time of filming this video, it's December 26th. But this one is one of my only ones that's not under grow light. And I mean, she's thriving. I would say this plant specifically gets maybe like six, six hours of bright indirect or like six hours of medium to bright indirect light. And then the rest is just pitch black because it's nighttime and it's winter time, so. So yeah, she's very resilient as you can see. When it comes to propagation, I won't be propagating this plant even though I'm obsessed with doing it, uh, just because I really want this one to get really, really big. Um, but it's an ep epiphytic plant. So you could see the nodes and aerial roots here. And essentially you would just um, cut between the internodes and, oh! <laughs> My gosh, the plant's attacking me. But yeah, you would just propagate the same way you would with uh, any other philodendron. So you could either propagate in soil, leca, perlite, um, sphagnum, sphagnum, sphagnum moss. But saying that, I've never propagated a philodendron Jose Bono. So yeah, I don't have any experience with that. Okay, so moving on to when I first bought this plant. I bought this plant. Um, insert date over here also insert picture over here <laughs> but when i first got this plant i only had one leaf and then it just started going off obviously she's she's healthy and and, and thriving and has come a long way when i first got this plant the roots were wrapped in sphagnum moss and i immediately put it into leca and passive hydroponics and yeah she's been good like nothing has gone wrong with it i think the two leaves that were in that picture are gone now but it pushed out one one two three four five six and there's a new leaf coming in so about seven leaves it's pretty good and they're really large large leaves this plant right now is against my cold cold window and i mean it's it's pretty close to a humidifier but i honestly don't believe it needs that much it's just like the only place i could put it okay so i guess that concludes the first part of this video series it's not a series it's a two-part thing i don't know but yeah if you guys want to see me repot this plant i'm um, into leco we could take a look at the roots and i'm pretty sure i'm going to have to cut i'm gonna have to excuse me stop Sorry, my laundry's done. But I'm, pro I'm probably gonna have to cut the pot away because I don't think, oh my God, I'm gonna spill everything. I don't think that I could just pull out the roots, um, especially this one over here. If you guys enjoy this video or if you own this plant, I would love to hear your experiences growing this plant. And you can leave the comments in the comment section below. And if you guys made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye.